Welcome back to theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's live streaming television show. We're here in San Francisco at the first Node Summit. And I've got with me two guys who are uh, really key in the Node community. I've got Daniel Shaw, who is uh, runs the Node Ups, uh, or uh, actually, what is it called? It's just Node Up? So Node Up is a podcast, NodeUp.com, at Node Up on Twitter, and um, the Node Up Live is something we organized right before Node Summit. And we also have Chris Williams, who's the organizer of JSConf, which was the event that, uh, as Ryan Dahl told us earlier, is the place that uh, Node, uh, Node.js basically launched. And uh, Chris also uh, is involved in a startup. I think it's probably the coolest startup I've seen here. It's called... Oh, you're being too kind. Uh, Thank you, though. I definitely uh, appreciate that. Uh, For those of you who are aging voting. safely. Vote. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, Dan also works at uh, Voxer, which right. is you know a, a big Node.js uh, adopter. We interviewed Matt Ramey earlier. Uh, so, w where do you guys uh, think that the Node community is going? I mean, it, it's grown it's grown incredibly uh, quickly. I mean, is is it a sustainable growth? Is it in danger of of growing too fast? It's uh, you know it's we're, we're at uh, a real sweet spot right now where it's small close-knit and everybody knows each other. Uh, we're definitely going to be going across the threshold in the next year or so where we're bigger than the, the, the group of people that, that are, you know, you can keep into your, your social group. So it's going to be a real challenge for us. We're, it's something that, that a lot of us are thinking about and that we discussed uh, uh, at length at uh, summer camp last, last year. Um, we're concerned about it and doing our best to, you know, be inclusive and, and you know make everybody feel at home in the Node community. Chris, so uh, I kind of have, have a bit of a different perspective, and and by no means is that contrarian, or am I trying to be contrarian? Um, my my background is mainly from different languages using JavaScript in different ways, and the general broader JavaScript language itself. I have a concern that I, I voice sometimes, sometimes louder than others, that the rapid growth may actually be the downfall of Node as well as also the benefit. Um, you saw it a bit with Rails as it rapidly grew and it became, it became the monster that it actually was trying to combat. And right. I worry that Node will just, if it doesn't learn from the mistakes of previous communities, it's doomed to repeat it. Um, we see trends in computing programming where the new shiny thing lasts for maybe seven years, and by that seventh year, a new, new shiny thing. And in this case, it's Node, and eventually it'll be something else. Uh, I think that the best thing the Node community could do, those of you at home, would be to actually look at arguments that the Scala community, the Erlang community, the uh, Python community, the Ruby community, are making against Node, and instead of fighting it with, oh, you, you're wrong, um, try to understand the argument, embrace it, figure out if there's a solution and a path that can work, or if it's just a complete troll argument and just ignore it. Um, I worry that the hype actually ends up hurting Node on both sides, because there's a lot of negative hype as well as also positive hype. And if we could figure out as programmers how to just be programmers and not be Rubyists or Node people, um, I think we'd all be happier. And I think uh, there's been a lot of talk here about polyglots, but seriously, it's right tool, right task. Node can't solve everything. Um, it just can't. I mean, I, do you disagree? Or? I don't disagree, no. And, oh, okay. uh, no, I, I, I totally agree. And, and uh, you know, the, the lessons of Rails and, you know, its meteoric rise and, and how it you know, became a little bit too clickish, maybe. Um, you know, want to try to, you know, avoid having that in in Node, and that's that's it's a challenge. I mean, the there's a there's a, a large segment of the Node community that's here in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I don't know if someone coming from outside of San Francisco, you get a sense that like 
all the cool kids are here, and then there is that sense. Right. I, yeah, so you know, I moved out here uh, at the beginning of this year mm -hmm. because um, I really was excited about programming Node, and I was working uh, programming Java, and I wanted to uh, program Node, you know, as my as my day job. And San Francisco, uh, you know, a year ago was the only place that you could really do it and you know make a real career out of it. Um, that's starting to change now. There, there are lots of great opportunities all over the world, mm. but I, I, I very much see that there's, um, you know, it's still San Francisco centric, and there's you know a lot of core that's here. Well, I, I think that maybe it's that a lot of companies are doing it, but not as public, right? Um, which is part of growing up. It's uh, people don't want to put out that they're using it yet, because it's a, is this going to succeed? We don't want to necessarily be the ones out on the forefront and get cut by the razor. But we want to be out at the forefront so that way when it stabilizes, we're right there and we're kicking right. butt. Um, I know that I live in D.C., so I'm about as far from San Francisco as I think you can get in the United States. And uh, it's a different culture. We're still dealing with large enterprise government contracts that demand Java. And so in some realms, it's a different type of world. But by no means does that limit you. I know just through the Node Jam, there was at least four companies out of DC right. that are doing all Node-based programming, which is really cool to see. Right. Maybe not all, but hybrids of Node and other languages. Yeah, I, I, there was actually an impressive percentage of companies in Node Jam that are not from San Francisco. You know, there's this core group of, of the <laughs> Node uh, community that's, that's here in San Francisco. But, you know, as, as Node Jam demonstrates, you know, it's getting adoption all over the United States. And, you know, uh, I was in Italy over Christmas and, you know, got to go meet the guys at, at the, uh, the Rome Node uh, meetup group. And, you know, they're, they're trying their best to uh, bring Node and, and explore Node. You know, they're going against the grain with this, you know, uh, for them it's a really, really new technology. You know, in, uh, it, here in San Francisco, you know, we've, we've kind of accepted Node and it's quote unquote proven. Um, they're, you know, just trying to introduce it at their jobs and justify, um, you know, using Node as, uh, uh, on their products. Now when you say proven, Proven. Do like, you want to put that in like quotes? No, no, like proven, like uh, thumbs proven up. That, okay. Proven as in, uh, you know, Voxer has uh, millions of users every day that, you know, run on top of Node. But it's and not just Node, it's also running on C. You guys are doing nope. libpcap work. No. No? No. Okay. It's Node. It's Node. We are, we are Node, Redis, and React. So Redis and, is, and React is Erlang. Right, so we have the, so you, those you have data a, stores. I mean, you have we, different. You, we, we can't. Got a stack. Right. We have a stack. We we can't. No, there's no sane way we can do uh, a database. Mm -hmm. And you know, the only insane person is uh, Tim Caswell uh, doing you know a database in Node. He is. Um, quite I would deep. love. To, I would love to uh, be, you know, purely in Node with a database, but you know, the right tools for the job. Right. I, I'm. I only want to to put the air quotes on, just because we're at arguably an infancy in the language. Right. There are things that could pop up that, just because we haven't tread through the woods Absolutely. in these pieces, um, maybe it's just my cynical view, but mm -hmm. uh, we still find security holes all over the place in V8. Uh, right. Not even in Node, not anything that Node could do, but because we rely on all these different pieces, I always get worried when we jump to proven uh, so quickly. And I'm not saying it, right, right. it might not end up being that way, but I just, I try to make everyone be a little bit right precautious. Uh, I think that, you know, a solid architectural way going forward. We put a lot of effort you into, you know, making Node work. And like we're, um, you know, pushing so much data that we've, we've found, um, you know, edges in, in, in flaws inside of Node that you don't you, you wouldn't expose in an express app uh, you know getting you know a, a few million hits uh, a day but you know if you're doing you know massive amounts of data um, all concurrently uh, it stresses the the language and, and we, you know we've we found issues with uh, buffers and inside of node that that basically would not have been exposed in, unless it was at that scale. So I run into different sort of things. I'm trying to scale down 
No. So Node won't compile on smaller chipsets. Oh, right. Uh, and more cool. arguably fringe, but as ARM chipsets become more and more popular, right. it's more and more critical. Um, right. So that's why, just to put the air quotes around, proven, proven <laughs> means everywhere all the time. And, right on. Okay. Uh, air quote <laughs> proven just means... We're Air using points. it, and right. uh, it's, it's you know we, we haven't changed it our we minds haven't, yet. We haven't gone crazy. <laughs> uh, I don't think I don't think any language, uh, closure right. included at this point, you could say that it's a proven language. It might be proven in some cases, but not all cases. Right. Um, or well, Scala has been around for a bit, but there's some, there's one of the benefits of having years underneath your belt. Uh, right. Absolutely. JavaScript, the language has those years, uh, which is a, ben a huge benefit for Node. But we still find things that are edge cases and crazy. I'd like to get back to community. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. No, it's, it's no problem. Uh, one thing that you know it keeps coming up when we talk about the, the Java, uh, the uh, the Node.js community is how inclusive it is. Uh, but you know it, it, and as you said, that that might become more difficult as it grows. Right. But how do, how do you uh, accomplish that? Like what? How could another open source uh, community? Uh, you know, what, what, what's your advice to another community to, to, to achieve what Node.js has? Maybe not in terms of the speed of growth, but in the uh, inclusivity of it. I don't know. I, just remembering that everyone uh, matters and they have a, um, their point of view is, you know, a solid contribution. And, like, we're, as a, as a language and a community, so young, you know, Someone who's old in the community is like two years. You know, it, it, that's not that that long. So you know, people coming in and approaching new things, doing different things with Node, have new and useful uh, perspectives that uh, you know we need to to keep in mind. And you know, we might be in some subset or some corner of Node that really works for what we're working on right now. Um, but the fact that, that people are doing, using it in, in different ways makes the entire community richer and you know, makes the, the language stronger and helps us find you know, bugs that, that what we're, we're, we've been working on, that little like, segment of it that we're, we're working on, you know, is not necessarily going to stress as much. Right. And the JavaScript community, is, it, it, it seems pretty similar, uh, a pretty yeah, big umbrella, um, uh, inclusive, but it's been around longer, it's been growing. Sort of. Longer, we've so. had we've had like ebbs and flows. So sure. you had yeah. Ajax experience during sort of the bubble and the XHR giddiness. And uh, my wife and I started JSConf at, uh, four years ago. And one of the things that we tried to do in building JSConf was keep things small and intimate. If you actually know somebody face to face and have had a shared experience with them, you're less likely to be like that guy's a, a some nasty word um, or be very aggressive in a response. It, it's there's a human, as long as you remember there's a human, we find that community works a lot better. Um, we've, we've, every year we've tried different things, and I, I think for any other language, keeping the intimacy, the, the meeting every person, the connection, and then also having some deeper beliefs that are just beyond programming. Um, when we do JSConf, we try to make it a family event, and, and by that I mean you don't leave going, that was a good event, you leave going, I made some really deep friendships here, and you know I may not see them until I come to San Francisco once a year, but I could call up anyone and be like, "Hey, can I crash at your place?" And they'd be fine with that. Um, so we try to make it come in together, and I know other communities are doing that, and it's all in sort of picking the right values, I'd say, uh, and which seems weird. It seems like that shouldn't be in the tech sphere, but it really does matter. So like JSConf, we run the budget to zero. And whatever money we don't spend at the conference, we donate back. Um, we donated last year uh, at the, and announced it at JSConf uh, over $3,000 to gender and racial diversity outreach programs. And that sets the right tone for the community, that we want to change the lack of gender and racial diversity. But it's not something that you can just do overnight. It's something that's going to take a long period of time. So we want to get started changing future generations now. And something else you do that impressed me is you have the significant other track. We do. So, so that you know, when you come to the, the conference, you're not just leaving your, your spouse or your partner mm -hmm. at home, or you're not just leaving them at the hotel either. This comes from it being a husband and wife team that puts it on. <laughs> uh, my wife is awesome, and we came 
I went to a conference in Toronto. It was uh, Ruby Fringe, and they actually had it. So I get no credit for coming up with the idea. It changes the whole dynamic. If you're a male or a female at a conference, there's a general tendency to go out drinking and, and maybe networking a little bit too much. Um, whereas if your spouse is there, it keeps it at sort of a professional level, which is very nice. And um, they are happy because they're doing stuff. They're not cooped up in the room. And it really keeps that whole family sense back in the conference. And so I encourage anyone who's running a conference to, do, to consider doing a significant other track. So it's an idea. Run with it. OK. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to say to the JavaScript community, the Node.js community, or or about the, the communities? Um, so there's something you know we're we're uh, going to be exploring uh, doing the, the live Node up uh, a little bit more, uh, looking for some venues. Uh, we might do something at South by Southwest, uh, and maybe try to do something in Europe later this year. Uh, if you're interested in sort of helping and doing that, uh, you know Linux up Live is just us going out and sharing and, and talking to the community. It's not, you know, anything, it's it's a very, you know, grassroots like a low level. Like a public forum, like town hall meetings? It's not a thing. public forum. It's, you know, it's a group gathering. You know, some, something we have in San Francisco is almost every night there's a some sort of a tech event and it's in an office somewhere and, you know, there's a lot of uh, speaking and you know, what we really enjoy most is getting together and geeking out and talking about what we're working on and sharing ideas. So, you know, that's the kind of thing that we want to share. And that's one of the things we try to share with, with the podcast. And, um, you know, uh, another thing with, with NodeUp, if uh, you have ideas for, we, we've been doing deep dives. We did a deep dive on NPM. We did a deep dive on database. If there are topics that you... Uh, Want to um, want us to cover? Um, definitely, you know, at, uh, note up and uh, you know, send those our way. We look forward to, to exploring some of those more. Okay, Chris. Uh, if you're listening at home or watching at home, uh, before you go posting anything on the internet, just think. Take two seconds. Think: Is this negative? Am I being a little bit over? Breaching, and that applies for all technology communities. I made a big call at JSConfU this year to try to change our our mode of operation. There's a, a negative bias that permeates every single media channel in, in the whole technology sphere. And it's a lot of bitter infighting. And it, it really doesn't help anything. Um, if, if somebody comes at you, try to take a step back, see what the problem is. Don't go immediately throwing back spears and knives. And don't go plus oneing onto piles that, that really, you know, maybe two people should just have it out, not have the audience or the arena of people cheering them on. Um, if we could do that, I think the whole technology field as as a total group could be a lot happier and a lot better place. So. Great. Well, thanks a lot, guys. We're Thank going to take